Join in. Salam alaikum, everybody. This is Salam Al Mariadi from the Muslim Public Affairs Council. My guest is uh, today is uh, Chris Valvelt with uh, Launch Good, and uh, that's a platform for crowdfunding. And uh, Chris, why don't we just start? You know, a lot of people don't know what crowdfund crowdfunding is. Uh, it's still a, you know, for the boomers, yeah, it's still a, a foreign term. So uh, what what? You know, explain to us and how the platform works that you have cool, set up. Cool, cool. Yeah, definitely. So crowdfunding is it's actually really simple. Um, we're all familiar with it. If you pay taxes, that's a form of crowdfunding in a sense. Uh, you're taking money from a bunch of people and using that to fund stuff. That's at its most basic meaning. But that's not what we mean when we talk about crowdfunding today. So when we say crowdfunding, most of the time people are talking about using a website like LaunchGood or GoFundMe or Facebook fundraiser, et cetera, to raise money for a very specific cause. Um, as an example, uh, right now we have, uh, or we, we might have a, a LaunchGood campaign for MPAC to do their annual fundraising banquet or something like that. Um, it's a, maybe a 30 day campaign. You guys raise money. That is uh, an example of a crowdfunding platform uh, campaign. And really what you're doing is you go to a website, mm -hmm. you have to enter in some information, put a picture in and tell a story. There's so much good work being done out there, but the causes that get money are the ones that tell the best story. Um, and it, it is what it is. It's, it's really about storytelling. And um, you get a link and you share that link as widely as you can through WhatsApp, uh, through you know, email, text messages, whatever. Um, so even if you're a boomer, I mean, we have people in our community that are not, maybe they don't even own a laptop, but they yeah. are WhatsApp warriors. You know, I mean, they're, they're forwarding stuff all the time, videos, links, yeah. fake news, whatever it is. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so it, it's actually interesting to see, we've had some boomer campaigns that shocked me. They did very, very well because they mm -hmm. leveraged those networks. Um, mm -hmm. So if you can get that link out to your crowd, you actually have a good shot at raising a bunch of money. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, I, I know, you know, we had Tarek and Masidi on and he uses that platform for Celebrate Mercy. Um, and uh, what, are, what are some other best examples for us to, to look at and hopefully follow? You know, uh, we just uh, put together a blog post and I'll share it with you uh, after this call of you know, seven strategies that actually work for, for online crowdfunding. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Tark is definitely one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. and we could just have a whole conversation just about what he's doing. Um, uh, I, I think what I'll say at a, a, at a high level to start with is if you are really passionate and you have a team behind you and you're persistent and you're not going to quit, you're going to, I believe, find a way to get your, your funding online. Um, but some different strategies kind of get very specific. Uh, yeah. What I actually want to want to talk about first, what won't work mm -hmm. uh, or, or is what won't work, because I think it's good to know what's going to fail. So you avoid that. Um, the first thing I think is just throwing stuff online. So some people think that if I just create a link online or if I just send out an email, like link to donate that some, for some reason people will donate. And that's just mm -hmm. not true. Um, so if you just throw something online, that's not going to work. If you just do a zoom webinar that to raise money, that's not going to work. Unfortunately, I saw that with uh, one of my favorite organizations here in Michigan. Um, they had a banquet Sunday, of course that was canceled. So they did a zoom, a zoom banquet instead. Um, and normally they raise about $150,000. Mm -hmm. um, in their banquet, they only raised five thousand dollars on their mm -hmm. Zoom, mm -hmm. so that's not going to work either. Um, and uh, what will work? Here are some strategies. Uh, so one is find matching funds. People love that. Mm -hmm. um, so if in in this, you know, may not be so hard for organizations. A lot of time, organizations, even if they have in their annual fundraising fundraising gala, gala they already know oh, you know, this uncle or this auntie, they're going to give $20,000 at the banquet. Mm -hmm. And they see them in the audience oftentimes, right? Um, get those uncles and aunties together and say, hey, can you put together your money as a $50,000 match? And then when you're going out there and you're asking people to donate, it's not just support my campaign. You say, hey, we need, we've got this match and we got to raise 50000 by the end of the week and then we can get 50000 And that's actually 
um, uh, the boomer campaign I was referring to, there's a masjid here in Dearborn and masjids are notoriously difficult to fundraise for online. Um, one of the philanthropists in the community offered a $100,000 match with the condition they had to raise 100000 by the end of the week. And this campaign, it did not, like, a lot of check boxes were not checked off. Like, the video was in Arabic, not in English. Um, th there are all sorts of problems with their actual fundraising campaign. Mm -hmm. But just that match, that $100,000 that were available out there, ignited the community, and they raised $120,000 in just five days. Um, so throwing the hundred thousand dollar match, that's over two hundred thousand dollars in one week of fundraising. That's amazing. So that if communities can unlock a match, that's the best thing I've seen so far for online fundraising. So in this time, you know, when when people are are asking, how can I help? What what are some of the the more uh, important campaigns on launch good, launch good right now? Uh, that are dealing with the coronavirus crisis? Uh, with the coronavirus, the big one we have, of course, is Tarek al Masidis with Celebrate Mercy and Penny Appeal. Um, that one is, is amazing. Um, over 400000 almost half a million dollars raised. Now, maybe over half a million, I have to check. Um, uh, but, and here's the kind of the sad part, as successful as that is, they actually had to shut down temporarily the application for funding because they're overwhelmed by the number of Americans um, requesting aid right now. Um, so there's a big need, like there's a big amount of support, but the need is tremendous. Uh, thankfully yeah. with this, you know, $2 trillion trip stimulus bill, that's definitely going to help. Um, I'm yeah. really happy to see that was passed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think there's not one solution right now. We need to do everything we can. Um, I, I do believe it sends this incredible message for America to see that Muslims are raising hundreds of thousands, inshallah, maybe even a million dollars to support fellow Americans going through this crisis. And so I'm, I'm supporting that campaign. I really hope others do. That's launchgood.com slash Corona. Mm -hmm. um, but if people want to take it to the next level, there's one other thing they can do yeah. is they can create a campaign for their own community. And we're seeing this, um, uh, the Islamic uh, Shorter Council or the Shorter Council of uh, Southern California, I think put together yes. a campaign um, that, you know, because sometimes when it's closer to home, people will donate more and, and it'll be easier for people to find support. Um, and so we have right now, I think around 60 campaigns worldwide started just by local communities that are supporting, just trying to raise funds. It's not going to raise a million dollars like Tarek and Penny Appeals campaign, but it might raise 30,000 or it might raise 50,000. And that's going to support the community directly. And that, that also is a great effort. And so if people want to do that, they can just go to launchgood.com slash Corona relief um, and, and start their own campaign. What about uh, nonprofits? You know, a lot of nonprofits are going to go through the financial crunch like everybody else. Is there anything that um, uh, is establishing a fund to help nonprofits get through this time? Yep. Yep, definitely. So we're actually going to be creating a few different landing pages. Um, one specifically for masjids, one specifically for Islamic schools, and a third for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to provide uh, some of those best tips. So, you know, I already mentioned the one about um, uh, getting that matching fund. Uh, the other one that we've, we've seen um, uh, work really well. Um, let me just pull it up here quickly. Yeah, and share it if you can on the screen. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple other things I want to mention that work well. Uh, one okay. is utilize influencers. So this was, I, I told, mm -hmm. mentioned there was, um, you know, let's just mention, I, don't, I hope they don't mind, but Care Michigan, that was the organization I love. I, I donate generously to every year. Mm -hmm. They're the ones whose banquet was canceled and they, they just threw up this Zoom trying to recover um, the banquet and, and it failed. I think one thing they really missed out on was utilizing influencers. Um, so, you know, Brother Nihad, the executive director of CARE was supposed to be a speaker there. Uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi was supposed to be a speaker there at the banquet itself. Right. Um, they had no part in that webinar. And that was to me a huge missed opportunity. Go ahead and get a pre-recorded message from these guys or invite them to hop on the webinar for five minutes. Right. You know, um, you, influencers work big time. And one of the reasons why 
Celebrate Mercy and Penny Peel's campaign is doing so well right now is Imam Khad Latif and Imam Suhaib Webb are partners in that campaign and really pushing it to their New York community. And I think around $200,000 has come from their network alone. And so a lot of nonprofits, they do know, I mean, they may not be able to get Imam Khal Latif, but um, just some, you know, we call them micro influencers, people that have a couple thousand followers within right. their community or attach their community. Ask them ahead of time, get them to support their, your campaign. You'll be surprised, but it can really make a big difference when that happens. Um, and then uh, the other thing uh, that I think is overlooked is mm -hmm. phone calls phone calls like we we think phone calls are like ancient and, and outdated uh they still tend to be the most effective use of your time if you're fundraising um mm -hmm. and i don't i don't know if mpac still uses phone calls um uh it's a bit of a pain but uh it, it really works so you give people a phone call follow up the phone call with a whatsapp message or a text message and, and mm -hmm. ask them to support and you just have to keep asking. And we saw that um, on Giving Tuesday, we had an organization out of the UK called Pilgrim. They got 1,500 donors in 24 hours just because they had a phone tree going on. Wow, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think we look for a lot of shortcuts um, with yeah. online crowdfunding. And, and I don't want to say they don't exist. Like Things like Facebook ads can be really effective and some of these other things and, and, but they take a level of sophistication. Not all of our nonprofits have, um, and the basics always work like personal one-on-ones phone calls, um, creating a list of everyone you expect to donate, um, and, and making sure that they do that simple organization is really effective. Uh, what about the, the medical needs? Uh, there's so much that, um, you know, we're seeing out there where hospitals are, are going to be above capacity, very dangerous situation. Uh, are any of the relief organizations doing something on Launch Good for providing uh, more support for, for health workers, for the health healthcare system? Yeah, actually, um, that's something we've seen a lot lately and it's, it's exciting. I, one, one just uh, is about to launch in Los Angeles, actually. Um, uh, and I'm trying to remember who they're working with, uh, with through one of the charities. I know Zemzem in Chicago is also doing this. Mm -hmm. They're raising $100,000 to distribute the, uh, you know, the N95 masks to our healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really exciting to see is that finally, like a lot of people are getting into this. Um, and it's important. You know, I think, you know, Allah puts different things into everybody's hearts. Yeah. And the needs are many. But I find that collectively, like, the needs are, are covered by what people find in their hearts. You know, so like Imam Suhaib Webb is actually very interested in doing more with the masks for first responders specifically. Um, I, know, I know somebody else is really interested in masks, but not for first responders, but for the elderly and the, the vulnerable in society. And both need that, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so that's great to see. And that's the whole idea of Launch Good is it's meant to be a platform that allows a lot of people to pursue whatever it is that they're interested in doing um, and uh, connect them with donors that are likewise interested in, in those efforts. So what about people who can't contribute financially? What, what, what can they do? You know, uh, um, it, 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 I think everyone can contribute financially, even if it's a dollar. And, and, uh, and I think there's a, an important reason for that. I'll, I'll talk about in a second. But mm -hmm. what anyone can do, even if they can't give a dollar, is they can share a campaign. And you right. might think like, oh, you see that someone's, uh, like I was myself actually, I'm someone who, you know, the religiously shares campaigns. Like if I support a campaign, I make sure to hit share. And I'm always thinking to myself, it's probably a waste. I don't think anyone, like on my Facebook, I noticed nobody ever comments when I share a campaign um, or rarely comments. Like it's not like, it doesn't get the same interaction my other posts might get. And then we ran some data a few months ago. And I, I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed to share this, but I will. Um, over half a million dollars has been donated through my personal shares. And I was like, I, I have not personally donated half a million dollars. I've donated like <laughs> a, a, a single digit, you know, percentage of that amount. But to see that, wow, like I've been sharing all this time and people 
actually have been donating and we just enabled this thing that like every time um, you share now your, your link, you right. will get an email saying, Hey, your, your friend, you know, Sue just donated to uh, the campaign through your link. Um, we don't tell you how much she donated. Um, we just let you know that she donated or someone else donated. And I noticed that every time I champagne, like four or five, six people might donate through that. And then sometimes it goes viral. Like, I don't know why, like it just started getting shared and dozens of people start giving. And so it's something I never thought too much about, but we're finding that even just sharing a campaign to your network can have a surprisingly large effect. Uh, we have a question from a guest, uh, Ada Favora. And by the way, for those who want to ask questions, go ahead and type them in the chat space. Just go ahead and type your question and we'll, we'll ask uh, Chris on your behalf. Um, is it recommended to do a crowdfunding campaign at the same time as other fundraising campaigns you are doing? Um, yes, uh, I, I would say so if I understand the question correctly. Um, so uh, pre-coronavirus, for example, we would get people um, doing a crowdfunding campaign and at the same time they're going to masjids and doing khutbahs and collecting cash and uh, doing, ma doing mailers and getting that mail in. At least within LaunchGood, we have a feature where you can add in all the money you're collecting offline. Uh, there's no fee for that. It's a management system. But for example, um, uh, it reflects the total raise. So maybe you have a campaign, you're trying to raise $100,000 and you collect $30,000 through Friday khutbahs. You, you receive 10,000 through PayPal. You receive 20,000 through a Facebook fundraiser and, and another 50,000 through LaunchGood. You can update all that within your LaunchGood so it reflects the total of what you've accomplished. Um, and that's been, uh, uh, that's just a great way to have one central page that keeps people updated if they're thinking like, oh, I wonder how, you know, that effort to build the playground at a masjid is doing. They could go to launch and see exactly how far along you are in the project. Um, and that's, that's a great tool. Um, also from uh, RFA is, uh, are the medical appeals taking more precedence or priority over non-medical appeals? Uh, clarify the question. Uh, fundraising for other projects, crowdfunding for one and other strategies. I guess that's clarifying uh, the previous Yep, question. I got that. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely um, right now I would say coronavirus in general is um, kind of dominating. That's where people's mental and emotional spaces and that's going to dictate where they give their money very frankly speaking yeah. um so even like as much as in our does, for example sometimes we get mustard that's like you know we want to raise money for coronavirus but we also need to raise money for ourselves and we're not quite sure what to do and our recommendation is right now um if you're thinking about doing both right now just do a coronavirus campaign and don't worry about it taking away from your Ramadan donations. Yeah. Because I think if the community sees you standing up for others, they're going to stand up for you. Um, and, and really, it's a great thing we should be doing anyway. Um, you know, that said, if you do go to Launch Good and you look at the trending campaigns, so we have a like just go to launchgood.com and you scroll down campaigns, there's a trending section. Um, the very first most trending campaign actually uh, is related to uh, Idlib. Um, it's not related to coronavirus. After that, then you have coronavirus campaigns, one in Jakarta, one in Malaysia, um, you know, the Penny Appeal one. So uh, generally, yes, coronavirus is, is really popular, but you'll still find that all sorts of campaigns are getting, are able to get. So, so the, the relief for um, those in need abroad, are, do, are, are they remaining the same or do you see that dwindling as opposed to the coronavirus and the needs for um, what's happening here in our, in, in the United States? Um, so far it's strong, which surprises me. Uh, but, uh, you know, that may change in, in the future. I mean, which one is strong? Our, uh, the international campaigns like, you know, Syrian relief, for example. Um, it's, it's staying surprisingly strong to me. Um, but uh, it's hard to tell where this will go. Like, for example, the economic depression is almost surely going to get worse in the U.S. And so maybe the coronavirus campaigns will be of even more importance. That said, once Ramadan hits, I think people's hearts also really open up big, big time to those international reasons. I mean, with, at least within LaunchGood, we find 
that sort of, I call it simple charity. Yeah. Is what people want in Ramadan. Like I just want to help orphans. I want to help uh, refugees. I want to help the most vulnerable people in society. Um, question um, from Iman. Are donations to launch good Zakat eligible? Uh, it depends on campaign. So everyone who's fundraising can has an option to declare their campaign as Zakat eligible or not. Um, we don't police that because there, as you know, there's a lot of different interpretations of Zakat eligible. Um, but uh, we let campaigns declare themselves Zakat eligible or not. And then when you're donating, you can check off a box that says this donation is Zakat or not. Um, the one exception is Ramadan. So within Ramadan, we actually do um, work with a sheikh to verify Zakat eligible campaigns. So we have like a super verified Zakat eligible category um, uh, that, you know, just to make sure because there are, you know, about last year, about $5 million was given as Zakat on launch good um, in Ramadan. And so we do have that in Ramadan, but outside of Ramadan, it's just up to the people that are fundraising to uh, declare themselves a cat algebra or not. Yeah, this, this is a fascinating program you're having, Chris, because I, I think microfinancing and getting to the individuals in, in many ways can be more powerful than just having a couple hundred people in a room to fundraise for a project. So, you, you know, I, I salute I, you for that work. I, I have a good example of that, um, very personal one. I'll just share it real quick. Um, there's a brother in our community. His name is uh, Abdul Hakim. Um, his English name is James, the African-American, uh, uh, formerly incarcerated. And uh, he's a great brother, alhamdulillah, very um, important part of our Detroit community. Um, mm -hmm. So my launch good office is in Detroit, even though I live in Dearborn. Um, and uh, subhanAllah, he's v you know, like there's, they talk about in the Quran that the people most deserving of your sadaqah are the ones that they're in need, but they never even ask. Right. You know, they're very... Like, you, so you would look at them, you wouldn't even know their need. And this right, brother right. is like one of those people. And um, sometimes you can tell like, okay, this, he, he feels like burden or something. I was talking to him and man, like he's going through a lot. You know, I found out he's, he's had carpal. So, you know, he's a laborer. So he just works with his hands, but he's got carpal tunnel syndrome and he, he really couldn't afford the surgery. So he's just been putting it off for a long time. And then he's got this hip pain. It turns out it might be cancer. And they're like, you need you know, this surgery to remove this growth on your hip. And um, meanwhile, he's getting married or he got married and they're about to have a baby. And so they need like a, a bigger house or apartment. And he's, you know, you could tell like he doesn't know what to do. And uh, so I just put together a little launch good. I never even shared it on Facebook because there's some sensitive information there about um, his wife's parole officer and stuff that could get them in trouble. And so I didn't want to uh, risk that for him. So I just shared it with a few friends through WhatsApp, a couple of WhatsApp groups. I trust the privacy of it. And um, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah. I mean, they raised like $6,000 um, just through that. And for him, it's, it does, it's kind of embarrassing because it doesn't feel like a lot to me. Um, I mean, it's a lot. I can't necessarily personally fund 6000 myself, but to go to my network and collect $6,000 is not backbreaking work. For him, it's change, completely changing the quality of his life. Um, and, and that is very powerful. And that's what we believe in in Launch Good is like really empowering individuals to make a change within their community. God bless you for that and, and all your work. Uh, one last question. We have time for just one last question. We'll have to wrap up now. Uh, does Launch Good get involved in policy work or published data that can be used to educate policymakers? Like, for example, how many Americans use their campaigns for healthcare needs or for unemployment, et cetera? Hey, so I, can, so I know Bakir is from uh, Dearborn. Yep. Uh, that's a boring question. So I want to get one yeah. other question. Yeah. But no, it's a good question. <laughs> um, we currently don't. I think that's like, that's one of our goals long term with LaunchGood is kind of open source the data. We have like, we have amazing data from our website now with, you know, um, millions of visitors a year. and tens of millions in donations and all sorts of stuff going on. Um, that's a capacity issue. And so inshallah, as we grow a little bigger, we'll have a chief data officer and we can find a way to open source that because I think it could benefit the community. But maybe we could take one more like fun question. A fun question? I want a fun question. Uh, fun question. What are you doing on, uh, with your kids right now? 
Oh, a fun question that relates to launch kit. I want to benefit. I want to make sure I benefit people. If, if no one has any other questions that you know are, are burning questions, yeah. Uh, what I will do is let me see if I got one more like golden tip I can give you guys. Um, yeah. You know, I'll say this. I, I think this is just useful in general. Uh, th there's a lot of other tips. Uh, right now, in response to coronavirus, we're offering. Uh, free consulting calls like it's it's a really busy time in your year for us because we're ramping up to Ramadan we actually just made uh, seven new hires so there's like all sorts of stuff going on internally but um, we know how important this is so if you want to talk to me or one of the other uh, business yeah. leaders in launch good we, we are offer, offering free 15 minute consultations and um, you know maybe after this we can just you know figure out a way to share uh, that. Uh, RFO is asking how, how does one boost the campaign and does that help? Uh, boosting like through Facebook boost, I assume. Is that what you mean, Arifa? If there's anything, uh, I, I think boosting Facebook, everybody knows. I hope, I think everybody knows, but beyond Facebook, is there any other way to, to boost? Oh, yeah. I mean, boosting really helps. We have marketing packages. Um, the problem is we're sold out. So we can't handle, like at this very moment, we can't uh, offer any more marketing packages. But I, the marketing and launch good is amazing. Actually, we're really um, put a, a big emphasis on, on it in the last year. And it's, it's incredible. Like, you know, Hamza, we're able to generate tens of thousands of donations for people through it. Um, the that's not available specifically just because I mentioned it's sold out. We always give people feedback on their campaigns and tips. And I think that's even more valuable is sometimes you just need to know what to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone has the, the most fundraising potential is already inside of you. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're very happy to help with that with people, um, give them those, that, that sort of feedback and coaching. And, uh, but I will say Facebook ads right now is a steal. So um, if anyone's like nerdy like that, uh, data wise, Facebook usage is like through the roof right now because everyone's stuck at home. Right. But the economy is tanking. So people are not spending money on ads. So we're finding like this kind of perfect storm where you have a huge uh, supply um, or huge demand and, and low supply. And so the returns you're getting on your, your Facebook spend for ads are, are awesome. Like we're basically getting three times as many donations as we used to when we run Facebook ads for campaigns. Um, that's still something we can advise on. Um, even uh, normally we would run the ads for people where we're a bit stretched in, but we can advise that we can refer you to people that can run Facebook ads. For you. Uh, Facebook ads are definitely something that I think more sophisticated organizations with bigger fundraising goals should a hundred percent be using. All right. Well, what are you going to do with your kids today? What, what's your, what's your uh, activity? Uh, uh, I don't know. That? Actually, God bless my wife. She's doing something with them now. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my daughter really wants me to teach her how to ride uh, without training wheels. She's five, almost six. Um, but I told her that's going to need to wait for the weekend. Yeah. Well, God bless you for your work and thank you. Uh, and take care and stay safe. Uh, oh, well, thank you for all the work you guys are doing too. And well, this webinar series is great. Really wonderful. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I think just amplifying the work of the community is, is really important. Uh, and we're, we're glad to be a part of it. Great. All right. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.